So our second presenter is Jakub Schlo, who is a researcher at the Institute of the, uh, for the Study of Totalitarian Regimes in Prague. He's an author of many scientific papers. The most recent one, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is uh, Cleansing of Industrial Plants from Co Collaborationists and Antisocial Elements in 1945 um, from the Czech Contemporary uh, History for Contem Journal for Contemporary History, I think. Yeah. Um, so he is also a co-author uh, or editor of several monographs, um, among others, Mimorani uh, Lidovi Soft Praze, and his contribution today, I think, will be uh, on self-management in Czechoslovakia from 1968 to 1969. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, dear colleagues, uh, in my paper, I will focus on the phenomenon of uh, works councils, which originated in Czechoslovak industry during the Prague Spring in 1968 uh, and brought to Czechoslovak society elements of self-governing socialism. The first discussion uh, on the possibility of applying the self-governing principles in the industrial management took place in Czechoslovakia in the first phase of the Stalinization in 1956. A, a significant inspiration for the discussion was the uh, functioning of self-governments uh, in Yugoslav uh, and partly also in uh, Poland. However, the leadership of uh, Communist Party and trade unions refused at that time to follow the Yugoslav model, stating that the original structure of industry must be based on, a traditional, uh, on traditions of specific countries. Uh, they preferred, uh, preferred to solve the problem of employees' slow motivation within the existing or organizational structure by straightening the material involvement of workers in the uh, prosperity of the enterprises. This campaign was promoted by the President of the Republic and former respected leader of trade unions, uh, Antonin Zapotocki. Uh, the situation changed only as a result of economic stagnation in mid-1960s, when a new reform of industry and organization designed by the famous team around the economist Otashik opened up the space for the application of self-governing principles. Work councils were implemented in Czechoslovak industry on the basis of a government discussion, decision uh, of June 6, 1968, which contained the normative document called Interim Framework Rules for establishment of and verification of the activities of collective bodies of democratic administration and business bodies in enterprises. As a result of this impulse, works councils were spontaneously set up in around two, uh, 250 companies. However, they only had the status of an experiment and their Final legalization never took place because during the short era of the Prague, Prague Spring, uh, the planned reform law on socialist enterprises was not finally, finally adapted. The emergence of works councils uh, was not originally based on any long-term emancipation movement uh, in the ranks of industrial workers. Rather, the councils were the byproduct of economic reform. They, uh, they were primarily <laughs> intended to ensure the independent economic decision making. However, over time, the importance of the secondary democratic function of councils uh, as elected representative bodies of employees has grown. The leading initiative for the establishment uh, of works councils in most factories took a younger generation of business management, which at the time already consisted of technically oriented intelligentsia, supporting economic reforms. 
The same aim was also actively supported by local trade unions leaders who, since the spring of 1968, sought to return the union their original function of protecting the interests of employees. The project of works councils promised for the all uh, the actors on the factory level the creation of generally desired independence from the central bureaucracy. Moreover, reform offered uh, for ordinary employees a wage growth that considerably exceeded the usual flat wage classes since employees were uh, to be remunerated on the basis of the economical results of enterprises and thus were economically interested in prosperity of their companies. By the way, in 1968, the national uh, white uh, average year earnings of industrial workers had rose by 6.3%. As a result, works councils quickly became a popular phenomenon across all major group uh, of actors within factories. The only exception was all the part of management, which did not have su sufficient education to participate in economic reform. Since the summer of 1968, relatively uh, democratic elections to works councils have been held in individual companies. Active suffrage was limited only by age. Non-communists could also be judged. Uh, the party authorities did not intervene in the elections. They only limited themselves to appeal to the party members to participate at the individual basis as widely as possible. The elections were supervised by the trade unions. In the democratic vote, the workers surprisingly elected mainly the technical intelligentsia to the head of their own representative bodies. At Škoda Pilsen Enterprise, for example, the majority of elected functionaries had university degree and many of them had the international scientific reputation. For example, Arnoš Komarek, the chairman, <sighs> wow, <laughs> uh, the, the Arnoš Komarek, the chairman uh, of the Škoda Pilsen Works Council, was the leading manager of the development of Czechoslovak nuclear nuclear power plants. Nationalwide, technicians and economists made about seventy percent of elected board members. This significantly distinguished the Czechoslovak works councils from similar institutions in Poland and Yugoslav, where, on contrary, workers dominated the councils and the, repre and the representation of intelligentsia was regulated. Although the new Czechoslovak technical intelligentsia had sufficient education to develop its careers in conditions of economic reform. At the same time, it formally legitimated its position with its workers' background. That was the reason in 1968, the new technical intelligentsia de facto stood at the head of the Czechoslovak workers' movement. Politically, about half of the elected council's members were communists. However, this was, not, this was not a burden, but rather it strengthened the position of the councils within the political system. The communists in uh, works councils often felt bound by the non-political professional status of councils. They opposed any attempts by the superior party bodies to intervene in the council's agenda and they helped the councils to fade through their intentions inside the party hierarchy. The councils of the most influential enterprises, such as Škoda Pilsen, cultivated in 
intensive ties with leading uh, reform politicians, such as chairman of the National Assembly, Josef Smrkovsky. Although the works councils were, were completely a new element in industry management, they had to continue to operate in the old ongoing <laughs> conditions of a cent centrally governed economy. Good example of this praxis are castings for the company executives. The works councils carried out open competitions for the positions of factory directors on the basis of professional criteria. They examined economic, managerial, language and psychologi uh, psychological uh, competitiveness of aspirants. At the same time, however, party bodies in companies retained the right to intervene into personal policy. Board principles, technocratic, democratic on the one side and party directive on the other side were combined into the specific hybrid model. The party bodies respected the expert opinions of the works councils and vice versa, councils respected the personal recommendations of the party bodies. A common compromise was sought. For example, in Škoda Plzeň works, uh, in the autumn of 1968, was chosen a new general director, Jan Martinák, who had sufficient expert qualification, enjoyed the pa Communist Party trust, and at the same time, in the eyes of employees, proved his, its, his clear anti-occupation stance in August 1968. After the occupation of Czechoslovakia in August 1968, the pro-reform central leadership of Communist Party gradually lost interest in the project of works councils and stopped supporting them. By contrast, at the same time, the work councils movement gained more political momentum as many actors at enterprise level used the democratically elected councils to resist a renewed power of the anti-reform central apparatus. Moreover, some intellectuals so work councils serve self-governing economic principles as a phenomenon that could be extended into the whole political system. Uh, these ideas were promoted in particular by Rudolf Slansky Jr., the son of uh, previously executed General Secretary of Communist Party in 1950s. The culmination of efforts to transfer the economic project of works councils to the political sphere was the National Wide Congress of Councils held in Pilsen in January 1969. The Congress was attended by representatives of 183 enterprises, representing more than 900,000 employees. The critis they criticized the government and demanded the speedy adoption of the new law on socialist enterprises. After the fall of the reform, former reformist central leadership the communist, uh, of the Communist Party in April 1969, the project of economic reform was also terminated. Nevertheless, the works councils continued to demand their existence, defend their existence uh, with the considerable support of the bodies of Communist Party at the enterprise level. Uh, the incoming political regime was afraid of mass strikes and uh, managed to enforce uh, liquidation of the reform-minded enterprise bodies of the Communist Party only after the first anniversary of the August occupation in the year 1969. As a result of the sub subsequent party cleansing, 
the works councils lost their last political protection and dissolved, dissolved uh, themselves in uh, autumn 1969. Uh, the next attempt to implement the self-governing principles in Czechoslovakia occurred not until the year 1988. Thank you for attention.